This is a prayer and a reminder. All we have is now. Anak, umuwi ka na. This is a symbol of our voices. If you look at your neighbors around you, you will see who stands with you, who stands for you. At least I know that you can stand up. That's the thing I'm so happy about. The film is a feature documentary called Who We Become, um, and it focuses on three young Filipino-American women in Texas during their experience during COVID. And the film really goes into intergenerational exchange, civic engagement. I kind of have been describing it as almost like a coming of age documentary. We, we, we watch these three young women each kind of come into their own in the process of um, this experience. You must be the new help. Yes, ma'am. Do try to remember that this is your place of work, not your home. Who are you? No, Mr. Garrett, I'm Joy. This is my daughter. Grace. I saw her in my dream. It's a it's a horror with a small H, but you know, while PJ's is a coming of age, um, our film has been dubbed as a coming of rage film. It is, uh, you know, about a young uh, Filipino mother who's an undocumented worker in the UK, as well as a British born daughter called Grace. And uh, one day she's accidentally hired to look after an old dying man called Mr. Garrett in a big gothic house. And essentially they make a discovery there that changes their lives forever. Joining us on the show today via Zoom are PJ Raval. Uh, you have met him before on Sojanel TV. Hi, PJ. Welcome back. Hi, thanks for having me. He is joining us from Austin, Texas. Also on the show, uh, meeting him for the first time is Paris. Paris is a filmmaker, Filipino English. Um, joining us from London, Paris Arzilla. Hello, it's uh, so good to be here, thank you. I love that you both are expressing yourselves in films, uh, using your Filipino lens with a touch of Filipino culture in your creations. But not only that, it's just now um, having a wider platform. Ava DuVernay's outfit was actually the one that was hosting the screening of Who We Become. Paris, uh, this is such a big deal that your movie is opening in theaters. How do you feel about that? I mean, for me, I'm really excited, obviously. You know, I think a lot of me being a filmmaker now um, is driven by a lot of just self-reflection of when I was growing up, I really didn't see anything that kind of reflected my experience. Um, and so now just knowing that I'm able to create something and get it out into the world and hopefully, you know, interact with people, for me, that's kind of, you know, just an amazing uh, feat. Right. And for it be to be accepted by Filipinos and non-Filipino audiences, how exciting is that? Really exciting. I mean, um, the fact that there are two sort of uh, Filipino films coming out at the same time um, from two entirely different perspectives. You know, filmmakers uh, who have a Filipino background or, you know, have had very similar experiences of living as a marginalized community, you know, both in the US and in the UK. Before I was a, wanted to be a filmmaker that had, you know, dreams to do things like Star Wars, you know, or, you know, like a superhero film. But when Raging Grace was written, it was a reaction to, you know, a government that had incredibly toxic rhetoric towards immigrants, you know, the very immigrants who were supporting a very beleaguered national health system. And those were Filipino nurses and doctors who were dying on the front line. That thing really sort of inspires a type of rage that for so many of us, we're, we're told to kind of keep inwards. And I felt as a filmmaker, I started to feel the responsibility of trying to put our stories, ones that are often relegated to the background uh, of society, you know, on the main screen, on the big screen. It's only recently that we're seeing this kind of like revolution of inclusion. Did you expect this? No, I absolutely didn't. Like, I wrote this with very specific fear and terror and anxiety about what it is to rail against things like colonialism in the home of colonialism. 
For me, this was a film that needed to express a lived experience, which was one based off my own mother's experience as a, you know, a cleaner and a, a, a you know, a care worker. But the fact that the film has been able to speak to a lot of people's inner rage. I think the thing that surprises me the most is how much it's begun to resonate outside of the specificity of the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, how this has resonated with, with the black community, the Latino community. My heart is very warmed by the response to this. PJ, you, you were nodding your head. I, I, I see that there are parallelisms between yours and Paris' um, journeys as filmmakers. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen Raging Grace, you know, which was amazing. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things that really kind of binds our films together is I think they were both made in a very unapologetic kind of way. Kind of interesting, Janelle you know, this idea of saying like, well, it, you know, it's a Filipino film, it'll be embraced by the Filipino community. Not always the case, right? Because I do think there's oftentimes uh, this pressure to portray a certain kind of community when in reality, uh, as humans, right, we are complex beings with really complicated histories, with legacies of, uh, you know, colonialism, imperialism. And I think what we're seeing now is filmmakers such as myself and Paris and hopefully others, we're interested in really exploring that and unpacking that and showing how that uh, you know plays out in some of these films. If anything, what's really great about this moment is here we have two films thinking about these in different ways in different parts of the world and we can really see how they really are connected through a common history, right? And through a common goal, but also it's just trying to use our mediums as, an, as a way to express things that for me, I can't maybe articulate in certain ways, but I can show it on a screen, right? And hopefully in that process, when people are watching it, they start empathizing, feeling, experiencing what uh, these protagonists are feeling as well. Thank you for joining us today on the show as we talk to two Filipino filmmakers, both of whom will be releasing their respective films on December 1st, also a cause for celebration for our community because both films feature Filipino-centric stories and experiences. I know that you will relate to them, but also, you know what, guys, I am uh, I have always spoken about supporting just for the sake of supporting or supporting fellow Filipinos just because they're Filipinos. This is certainly not the case here. Um, I don't like doing that. I don't like supporting just because they're Filipinos, but I'm supporting these two films, Who We Become by PJ Raval and Raging Grace by Paris Zarcilla, uh, because they are good quality films. I've seen the screeners and I think that you should as well when they are both released on Netflix and the other in theaters starting December 1st. Here is the continuation of our conversation with this, these two brilliant Filipino filmmakers. I like that the two of you are, you know, putting it out in the open. Immigration issues, representation issues, and familial issues, right? What do you want the viewers to take away from each of your films? After making the film and kind of in retrospect now understanding it and looking at it, I actually think my film is really about love. And what I mean by that is I think here we have three protagonists. They're each trying to express who they feel they are, trying to find their place in this world, trying to understand their power as individuals. So for me, that's what I'm hoping people will get out of it when they when they watch the film, that they'll feel inspired to live their lives authentically, be expressive and personal and vulnerable with their family members, and maybe see the film as a way, as, as a guide for them. I want this film to be able to be a cathartic spectacle for a community and way in which we can collectively feel angry. Be, get, where the film gives you permission to rage, permission to feel frustrated, but more than the rage, more than the anger, I want people to be able to transgress that into a place of joy and celebration of our culture and who we are and where we belong. The filmmaking is, I, I believe, going back to one of its objectives, which is to educate, enlighten, encourage, and all that, right? Paris, you did take a big risk in 
making films like this that has a voice that's not just not not just to be consumed for entertainment did it pay off is it worth it yes yes it is what i have gone on to really appreciate is what this film has done for people within my community and beyond that you know what it has allowed them to feel having a uh, uh, an adoptee from you know the philippines who grew up in the us uh, adopted by uh, an irish catholic family has a very successful career as a doctor never felt like she ever needed to see herself on screen she was completely content until she saw raging grace and felt for the first time that oh actually i do need to be seen i do need to feel like i belong in a way that i've never seen myself before and it's those tears it's it, it's those you know that collective joy in being able to you know see a community on screen maybe in a way you haven't in cinema before has made me made this entire thing worth it there are so many filmmakers right now there's a group here in los angeles called film creative that's composed of different aspiring filmmakers um directors producers what would you say to them any advice or tips that you can share straight off the bat what i would tell them is your experience is important your story is important it is unique get it out there you know your lens is important right and then the next thing i would say is make work don't ask for permission don't wait for someone to ask you to do it just be proactive and make work and understand it as a tool of expression and understand it as a way to process the world the way that you're thinking about things i think giving yourself the permission to find your own authenticity is something that i wish i heard uh, when i was younger too outside of that i would say you are your own greatest asset and you really do have to look after it you must look after yourself you have to know when to give yourself a break and what that takes from a lot of creators is an extraordinary amount of physical, mental, emotional energy. And you have to know when to save some for yourself. But as uh, you know, PJ says, you know, film is a tool for expression, but it is a tool you have to remember to put down too at the end of the day. And it's a tool that comes with responsibility. Right, because you are able to influence people with the stories that you tell out there, the stories that you share, and how you share those. We come from warrior people. Okay? We were born with fire, and this is what we're seeing right now: this the stoking of embers being relit into a raging flame of pride and joy and celebration of who we are. So, come first December. Switch on Netflix, watch PJ's film, and um, go out to your closest Alamo and watch Raging Grace. And then the last thing I want to say about it is we make this work and we want it to be seen, so please go see it. <laughs> like, that is the best way to send a message to the rest of the world that these films are important, right? And that there is an audience for it. That's one of the things that the community can really do, too. It's also about supporting the work when it's made.